Hello folks, uh, Navid here from Edinburgh Endodontist again. Welcome back. Thank you for watching the clips on dental trauma. Today we are covering uh, crown root fractures. Please check the previous clips to familiarize yourselves with the format of these talks on dental trauma. This week we are covering fracture injuries. We are towards the end of the week and next week luxations. Today we will discuss crown root fractures. Watch the previous videos for the other types of fracture injuries and the first clip for AIMS, learning outcomes, etiology and risk factors. Crown root fractures are those involving the enamel, dentin and cementum and may involve the pulp. So if lucky, they may not involve the pulp. To me, personally, these are the most complex to manage depending on the severity of the injury. The ones that are unsalvageable are unsalvageable. The ones that are minimal are minimal, but the ones who fit in between, and because not two you know, injuries are the same, those can cause quite a bit of um, difficulty in, in the management of these types of injuries. Clinically, it really again depends on the extent of the trauma and fracture on what you are or are not able to even see and do. Deep fractures may not be visible at all. Uh, multiple split parts of the coronal aspect may mask the extent of the deeper injuries as well. This is why it is very difficult to manage. You may have little mobility and no visible separation of the fragments or a lot of mobility and shattered crown and separation which gets worse as the fracture goes deeper um, and actually the deepest part is almost always a platal due to the nature of the impact. Um, you know, it causes, you know, even more separation and more mobility and more problems. The, uh, you can get tenderness to touch, especially on, on se separating the, the two pieces of the, of the tooth. Um, and yeah, this, this, this can be quite a bit of a trauma and impact. And patients who've usually had these, these types of injuries when they present uh, they, they are very, very scared uh, and, and they don't know what's, what's, what's happening. The dentists who treat or see these, these uh, patients get usually scared and freaked out as well. Um, it may not be possible to figure out how deep the fracture goes by just clinical examination or even periapical radiography. CP, uh, CBCT helps a lot, uh, but only if you're certified as a referrer or interpreter to use it. But alternatively, you can just uh, anesthetize the patient and examine and explore the tooth in a pain-free fashion. Gently manipulate the fragments, observe the, the, the gingiva, uh, check where things are pivoting from, and in severe cases, actually just to remove the very mobile piece and directly observe what has happened. You can see, for example, in this close-up photograph that how shattered this coronal part is. It is extremely difficult to uh, examine uh, this tooth because first of all, it's extremely painful. And these bits are just wobbling all over the shop. So it is, it's not an easy thing to, to do. Um, radiographic examination findings, as I explained already, they also depend on, uh, the findings depend on the extent of the injury. You may see the fracture line or not, but overall the, they are low in diagnostic value. Do not let our the most severe injury draw you and your attention to a diagnosis for that particular tooth and to forget everything else. Check all the teeth and carry out your systematic examination. Take parallax radiographs and also an occlusal to check the soft tissues as well 
on top of everything else, especially if the coronal fragment is lost, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So you need to get into a habit of having the same sort of systematic examination on every single patient who walks through the door with uh, with the traumatic dental injury, no matter what that injury is. So your uh, approach should be a systematic one. Uh, and if you get into the habit, then treating trauma is, is, is becoming, you know, a uh, second nature. The management in primary teeth involves either removal of the coronal wobbly fragment, leaving the rest of it to resorb away, or the extraction of the entire tooth. In permanent teeth, the management uh, can be complex. Again, depends on the extent and severity and also the time that you've got to do the treatment. In lucky, easy cases, you may just need to bond the fragments together. Also, other end of the spectrum, in the most severe unrestorable cases, you may just provide a bandage restoration just to cover things up, take an impression for an immediate denture, and buy some time for yourself to plan a definitive restoration. So it really depends. If the coronal part is in multiple bits, as we've already seen in one of the photographs, uh, and reattachment is not possible, uh, you may need to do root canal treatment and composite buildup to be able uh, to save the tooth. But trust me, it is not easy. You need to have a proper moisture control, which is extremely difficult in subgingially fractured teeth. As soon as you remove or manipulate the piece, it starts bleeding and it never stops. Um, you can use electrosurgery if you have it, uh, or uh, intraligamentary injections. Um, then uh, do a uh, pre-endodontic buildup of the tooth, then go back inside the tooth if you need to do a root canal treatment. Having said all of that, it's not easy. Same thing with reattachments. Uh, they're not easy with these types of injuries, uh, again, because of the poor moisture control. Uh, if you need to do root canal, it's better, and if you are thinking of reattaching it, the, 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 the separated fragment, it's better in these cases to reattach first, then uh, go through it to do the root canal treatment. But again, it, it all depends, not two cases are the same because you can also make the argument that, okay, if I can achieve a proper moisture control, then your access cavity is already there so you don't need to drill through that separated uh, fragment. So it, it really depends. It is a clinical judgment, whichever makes the life easier. If you can achieve a good moisture control, by all means, do not reattach. And if you're thinking of reattaching, do not reattach, do your extirpation, finish your root canal, and by root canal can be actually done in one visit if you need to do it because the apical aspect of the tooth is not contaminated, so it's a sterile environment. So if you can get a good moisture control, you can do the root canal in one visit and then reattach, which means that that separated part has not been cut through. However, again, it depends. If you find it difficult to control the moisture, it may be easier just to bond the fragment back and then go through it. So you need to judge it clinically. Uh, as explained already, uh, bonding the fragments uh, in very easy, simple cases, minimal cases, is, is easy and straightforward. Or in completely unsalvageable case, uh, you just provide a, a bandage, glass enamel restoration, take your impression for an immediate denture, and then buy yourself and the patient some time to plan for a definitive uh, replacement and treatment. So this is the same shattered tooth that we looked at before. Um, so the injury and impact, it was extensive. So the so root canal treatment was carried out first here. As you can see, uh, the tooth was built up with composite altogether. This is a very good immediate uh, result and the patient is happy. 
you again as I said you need just one visit root canal treatment because the apical pulp has not been contaminated yet. Another case is a bit different, a uh, crown root fracture in the upper right two. You are two, you can see the fracture line labially near the gingival margin here. Okay, look at the cursor. So in this case, the fragment was held just by soft tissues. Uh, so splinted with direct labial veneer using composite um, to make the patient more comfortable and hold the pieces together. So, you know, in a way it's a, you know, straightforward case but the management is important it is a very simple treatment straightforward get the patient out of discomfort to monitor use your four weeks four weeks three six twelve months standard review as we've already discussed in the previous uh, clips um, using clinical and radiographic examination now, these teeth don't have the best prognosis, you remember, but please, please try to save and retain them for as long as possible, if salvageable, okay? Right, to sum up, we're coming towards the end of the, the, the talk. Um, yesterday, we talked about root fractures, which you reposition and monitor. Today, we talked about crown root fractures, uh, in which if the pulp, is there we go not involved try to reattach the fragment restore by building up which you may need to do like elective root canal for or extract the review is the same four weeks three six and twelve months however if you have pulpal exposure and can get good moisture control, try pulpotomy. If you don't have to completely rebuild and uh, you don't need any um, retention from the root canal, just do pulp, uh, pulpotomy. Uh, and we described how to do it if you remember in the enamel dentin pulp fracture talk. Uh, so go and watch that if if uh, if you have not. So you can either do that or excipate to the root canal, followed by, you know, build up, um, either direct or use a post, or extract if unsalvageable. It really depends on the extent of the impact and injury. And as I said not two cases are similar. So you really need a clinical judgment and that is why it is more difficult. You cannot prescribe it, it's a clinical judgment. And the more you do it, the more you realize what can be done and what cannot be done. For example, some people do you know, orthodontic extrusion, some do crown lengthening, some do gingivectomy on top of all of this. So it, it's a clinical judgment depending on how much you've done. Remember time is very important. So you really need to be fast in your thinking, uh, your systematic uh, assessment to provide a treatment, either an immediate, you know, or get the patient just out of pain uh, or a definitive if you've got time. So do your best to save the tooth. But if unsalvageable, bandage, take impression for immediate uh, and plan for replacement. Okay, uh, thank you for listening and watching uh, this clip. Uh, come back tomorrow for our last talk uh, on uh, uh, fracture injuries, which will be uh, alveolar uh, fractures tomorrow. Um, and yes, yeah, stay safe, take care, and don't forget to visit Dental Trauma UK website uh, and the members. Uh, section. Enjoy. Take care. Bye now.